Hello, I'm Jeremy Gray and this is the Tracy Smith Show. On the inaugural installment, we'll talk to the head coach of the Indiana Hoosiers about some of the key performers that make up the 2011 Indiana Hoosiers, as well as a conversation about the state of the team going forward and possibilities of winning the Big Ten Championship. And we'll wrap up the program with a little look at the Indiana baseball intramural flag football team. But first, a Q&A with the head coach. Welcome to the inaugural installment of the Tracy Smith Show. This should be very exciting, talking to the head baseball coach of the Indiana Hoosiers, who in short order in his time here in Bloomington has turned Indiana from a struggling program in the conference to one of the conference and Midwest elite teams. And uh, Skip, let's kind of go around the diamond a little bit and talk about some of the guys who comprise the 2011 Indiana Hoosiers. And let's start at first base with a guy who set a record, all-time hits leader at Indiana, Jared Sabrin, and he's kind of the Gene Hackman of IU baseball. He's always the supporting actor. Fagley was there early. <laughs> you got Dickerson who came in late, but the steady hand at first has been Jared Sabrin for all those years. And I was waiting for you to explain the analogy there, but now I've got it exactly perfect. Now, you know, and that's the, 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 the neat thing for him because I think oftentimes baseball players are probably guilty of the college guys. They define their careers by what happens professionally after their junior year. and, and and, uh, you know, Jared didn't get drafted last year and really had a chance to, but I am so proud of the fact that he gets to leave here as the all-time hit record holder, and he has. He's been a steady guy for us from the time he was inserted. I can't, you know, I can't give you the exact number that he started in a row, but from the time that he was inserted at LSU his freshman year, he's been... You know, when I sit down and I'm doing a lineup, it's like that's, that's, the, that's the steady. That's the iron horse right there. And, and he's had a fantastic career here at Indiana. And we just talked about his hitting, but how many errors for infielders oh. has he saved over those four years with his picks at first base? A bunch. And that's where it's, and it's funny you say that because I sit here and I have nightmares about what are we going to do next year. when we, And you're right, it's not even about the hitting. What are we going to do next year when we don't have Sabrin over there scooping out ball after ball? Nothing against the guys throwing it from the left side of the diamond, but they would say the same thing. He, is, he has saved a lot of runs for us. Moving over to second base, a dynamic performer who had a great weekend against Northwestern. Phenomenal first two years of his career. A freshman All-American. The guy kind of has the swag. Mr. For swag. The team. Mr. Swag. Micah Johnson. Well, you know, he's... Um, and, and you have those guys, and, and as, as they go, we go. And he's kind of been that guy, and, and some guys, they don't like that. They don't like to be the guy. And, but I think he has shouldered that responsibility very, very well. And, and you even take some, some recent times. And we had, you know, no secret, we had a little bit of a struggle in the middle of our season. And, and we struggled because, quite frankly, Micah struggled. And uh, it's turning around because, quite frankly, Micah's turning it around. But he's, um, he's a dynamic player and, and I think going to have a nice career in this game a long time. But um, I, what I like about him is that kid had opportunities, chances to go probably anywhere he wanted in the country and, and chose to, to make the hour trek from Indianapolis to come down here and play in his home state and, and be a guy, uh, not only a, um, a great baseball player, but an Indiana guy for Indiana University. Then you got Michael Basil at short, and he came in and played right away. He's just a sophomore, and despite a profound change in the equipment, he's hit very well in his sophomore year with power. Yeah, and he's, he's strong. He's not your prototype, uh, prototypical body that you would see at short. I mean, he's, he's a very strong kid. I don't mean that in a negative way, but uh, he's adapted to the new bats very, very well uh, from an offensive standpoint because of the strength. Um, but it's been steady, you know, very, very steady guy for us and, and is a leader on the field. And, He's, you know, he comes from a, a baseball family, and uh, that, that has served him well in his time, and, and it helps us because it's like we got another coach out there. Well, obviously genetics are important when you talk about Dustin DeMuth. His father played tight end for the football team here. His oldest sister is one of the greatest women's players ever to play in the program in Jenny DeMuth. And then his other sister, Julie, one of the better players to ever play at Ball State in basketball. And Dustin an unbelievable freshman year, and it started that first weekend down at Coastal with great plays at third, and he's hitting in the high 360s. And we can't leave out the intellectual capacity of his mother, the recently... Uh, My uh, the wife's new, new boss. Yes, yes, the new superintendent. So he gets up, so we don't want to leave mom out there. Uh, but no, he, he's, um, you know, we've talked about him before. He's better than I thought he, and that's not saying I didn't think he was going to be good. He is, uh, and I guess that'd be a lofty compliment to say that he's better than I thought he was going to be at this point because I thought he was going to be pretty good. 
Um, it's going to be exciting and fun to watch that kid over the next two years and the type of player that he's going to become in this program, and I think even on a national scene. He's got a decent arm at third, too, huh? He, you know, I, and you know what? Every, every time I say this, he has the best arm I've ever coached, I get flooded with emails <laughs> of former players that are like, what do you mean? Uh, but uh, sorry, fellas, he does have the best arm I've ever coached. <laughs> yeah, he does. Well, let's go to the outfield and a guy who has filled a, kind of a unique role in his senior year, and he kind of bided his time is T.C. Nip. And there might be more spectacular players in your lineup, but I don't know if anyone's made more big plays and important situations for your team this year than T.C. Yeah, I mean, and when you talk about a feel-good story, uh, it is a feel-good story because he's – He's everything you would want your players to emulate, and I'm talking young players in your program. To see a guy who's paid his dues, who comes to practice every single day, who balances every everything that college can throw at them, and then to, to finally get that reward your senior year, and not just be a charity reward. I mean, it, it, he has earned everything he's gotten, and you're right, He I can't give you the exact number of assists from the outfield, but that kid has had more big throws and cut downs at the plate than anybody I can remember. and. Uh, so I'm happy for him, and, and uh, he's provided us exactly what we needed, which is that, that, that solid leadership, but also probably more importantly from a coaching standpoint, something that I can say to the younger guys, hey, look at that guy. You know, look at what he's done and look at how hard he's worked. And it doesn't come to you immediately. And um, so for that, I, I'm so thankful to have him and, and have had him for the past four years. Another Indianapolis kid who's played a lot in the outfield this year and had one of the best catches I've ever seen at Sembauer Field. Justin Kirtan, a guy who can do a lot. He can fly on the base pass. Very good hitter, especially against lefties and covers foul pole to foul pole in the outfield. Yeah, you know, I still love uh, Joey Donato's quote on that where Joey said he had his head down and was walking off because he th thought that ball that you were, the catch you were referring to was going to drop. But you and I have talked about this too. I mean, he's, he's the tool shed. He's got all the tools and, and kind of the same thing. I mean, he's really had to, to work his way in there and contribute. I think he's just scratching the surface because he, uh, he does all the things you like in an athlete in terms of running and throwing and all those things. And, and I just think the more that, that he understands the game of baseball and gets more comfortable in who he is and what type of player he can be, I think we're going to see some really great things out of him next year. Uh, you know you've really broken through as an athlete at in Indiana when you travel all around the country with various sports teams and they ask about a specific guy who doesn't play basketball or football and Alex Dickerson is that guy he has made quite a name for himself the triple crown winner in the Big Ten a year ago first team All-American high draft pick heading into uh, after this year talk about Alex Dickerson what he's done well I mean you know what do you say um, you know we've had some well you know some very very good players in our program before and first round draft picks and but it's funny because with Alex, it's, it's, it's almost like he's a victim of his own circumstances that some people would say he's having an off year this year. And I think he's hitting 360 something and a bunch of home runs and then running for the triple crown again. But because of what he has done and set the lofty standards, um, it, it's almost humorous to me. Because yeah, he is one of the best players, if, if not the best player probably, you know, to ever play um, for, for Indiana. And it's gonna be fun. Um, to follow him as he progresses through but I you know you can talk all about that stuff about how great a player he is and all that but and you know uh, he, he's that and then some as, as far as a person and and uh, for that's probably what's going to leave the most uh, in, uh, the biggest impression on me is what a great player he was but also what a humble and good person he was. Seemingly every year you have one guy who radically exceeds expectations and helps you out in a way that perhaps you didn't expect. I think there was the year that Chris Hervey hit 370. Um, Although like, Hervey would tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was expecting to do yeah, that. Exactly. He was absolutely yeah. expecting exactly. to do that. Uh, last year it was Michael Early and maybe a combination of him and Ethan Wilson down the stretch. This year that guy has been Wes Wilson behind home plate who's done a great job at catcher and in right field and he's provided that righty power that you need. Yeah, it's been fun because I think once he kind of settled in and, and you know, and, and Wes will be the, would be the first one to admit it's, it's not about, you know, the arm. All that stuff's been there. It's just been Wes settling in and being comfortable being Wes. And, and maybe a little bit through injury, you know, with Ty Downing. And, uh, you know, we put Wes in there and he, and he settled in nicely. I don't think we would have had the stretch or be where we are this year if we didn't have him settle in. It's been fun for me to see because you go back to the TC Nips, the guys that have earned it. He's the same thing. He has not played a lot prior to this year. 
you know, some would say, well, he should have been. You know, I, I look at it as he is getting what he deserves, which is a fantastic senior year. All right, we'll talk about the Hoosiers on the bump and the state of the team going forward right after this quick timeout on the Tracy Smith Show.